you could use some of the AI tools that I'm going to mention today to kind of convert that same image and make it like richer. And the thing is that it's not simply increasing the resolution. It's actually filling in the gaps with very photorealistic pixels. And that kind of makes it look better. Welcome fellow entrepreneurs to the Amazon Sellers School Podcast, where we talk about Amazon Wholesale and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle, and anything in between. And now your host, Todd Welch. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Amazon Seller School. And today I've got Ritu Java on the show. And we are going to be diving into using artificial intelligence for PPC, pay-per-click ads on Amazon, how you can improve your ROI using artificial intelligence. Now, Ritu has been selling online for over a decade, started selling on Etsy way back then. And now she is the CEO for PPC Ninja, which is one of the best softwares out there and service providers for Amazon PPC. If you haven't heard of it before, uh, definitely check it out. It's a, a good software. So I appreciate Ritu coming on the show, and we're really going to dive into this artificial intelligence stuff. So with that, uh, welcome to the show, Ritu. Thank you so much, Todd, for having me. This is awesome. Uh, you know, generative AI is one of the really interesting topics, very close to my heart. And so I'm excited to be uh, diving into some of the stuff that we're uh, seeing in um, generative AI and uh, how we use it for uh, PPC. Absolutely. AI is just taking over everything these days. I, I seem to use it most days more often than not. I've been using it a lot to write uh, app scripts for Google spreadsheets and manipulating data and stuff. And I have a computer programming background, so that's helpful. Uh, it makes it a little easier, but it does most of the heavy lifting for me. Wow, that's so cool because that's how I use it as well. I use uh, <laughs> ChatGPT to generate formulas and app script and SQL code and things like that. But don't want to intimidate everyone with those, uh, you know, very techy, geeky uh, terms. But there's so many use cases like, uh, you know, anyone can dive into uh, ChatGPT and uh, AI at this point. And there's uh, many, many use cases that uh, we'll be touching today. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll be uh, doing some of the basic stuff and probably get into some of the advanced stuff as well, but definitely be a lot in this episode everyone can use. So uh, I believe you've got some slides for us to go over. So if you want to pull up your screen on that, we can dive into those and get started with uh, AI. Yep. Um, let's get started. So I will be talking about leveraging the power of generative AI in e-commerce. So it's going to touch a little bit of PPC, a little bit of, you know, other use cases that support PPC. So overall, it's going to help you do better with your ads. It's not just about like bidding and things like that, because there's softwares that will uh, help with um, bidding algorithms. Uh, however, these topics that I'm going to cover today are the peripheral stuff, the stuff that you need to use with your ads uh, with, with uh, together with bid, bid optimization that I think most people will agree that is almost half of the PPC problem, right? Half of it is being able to automate stuff, being able to kind of uh, uh, manipulate bids, budgets, placement modifiers, you know, uh, bidding strategies, etc. And that's a realm that's perfectly suited for uh, software, right? But then there's the other whole realm of the creative side of uh, advertising, which includes things like, you know, creatives and headlines and um, keyword research and so many of those other uh, areas that are so important. And that's where I think uh, we're going to focus today and uh, see how generative AI can uh, can help us. Uh, just to say, this is uh, actually an understatement what I have on the screen, but AI saves my team at least 500 hours each month. And we were pretty early in uh, adopting AI in our processes and in just coming up with lots and lots of ideas to help with um, uh, you know optimizing the amount of time we would spend on different tasks and got a lot of the uh, manual stuff onto Google Sheets started creating semi-automated Google Sheets that would you know 
predictively produced results uh, without people having to kind of repeat two repetitive tasks each month every time when it comes to you know uh, optimization and stuff like that so it's an understatement 500 hours i'm probably you know, saving more than a thousand, I think, at this point. Just to say, between January of last year and now, there's been such an explosive uh, evolution of generative AI. We started with ChatGPT 3.5, went on to ChatGPT 4, then there were the plugins that came, and then, then the um, web browsing uh, capabilities. Then you had Auto GPT, you had God Mode, you had Code Interpreter, which then was translated into Advanced Data and, and Analysis. And now we see that the latest version of chat of chat GPT for the paid version, it already is the most advanced form of uh, the large language models that are out there. And it has the ability to do uh, data analysis. It has the ability to accept uploads. So you can attach files, right? You can attach entire PDFs. Uh, Excel files and docs and TXT files and images and all kinds of things and then use the um, uh, the prompt browser to kind of just query that information that you've uploaded and even make ChatGPT do all kinds of fun things. So it's kind of like a very cool assistant at this point and I almost, you know, use uh, ChatGPT every day. I can't do without it, right? Too, now that they've rolled everything together and you don't have to switch if you want to do data analysis or images and stuff, it's kind of all in one now, which is nice. Exactly. Yeah. And earlier there was a lot of settings that you had to do and not everybody could uh, could kind of get to those settings. Uh, but now it's like it's just built into the, the default. Let's see how we can you know, use ChatGPT for addressing repetitive advertising tasks. So on my screen, I have a few of the tasks that we do at our agency, for example, headline ad copy, right? Uh, we like to create sponsored brand headline ads that are highly customized to the keyword choices. And we want to make sure that this will help in higher converting ads, because if you have a headline that matches with the keyword that was associated with that ad, imagine people typing in the word and the first ad that shows up on the search results page is speaking to that because it has it right in the headline ad copy. Right. Mm -hmm. So we try to make our headline ads very, very bottom of funnel focused. Even though Amazon wants you to believe that sponsored brand ads are for brand building, we like to use it for ROAS focused bottom of funnel ads. And the only way to do that is if you're very targeted, highly targeted, and you're extremely granular, uh, almost going to the extent of creating single keyword headline ads, uh, where the headline is very, very closely tied to the keyword and in fact includes the keyword in uh, in the copy itself. So how do you do that at scale? We we use ChatGPT for that. And I'll show some examples of that. The second task I've uh, listed here is lifestyle images, right? A lot of times our clients at BBC Ninja's agency don't have the resources to generate lifestyle images. Well, now that's super easy. You can actually create very you know, visually compelling lifestyle images using uh, not only ChatGPT, Dolly, but also like Midjourney, of course, the, the biggest one out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's a, a little price you'll, you'll pay for uh, mid-journey, but if this is something that you're doing on an ongoing basis, especially if you're an agency, for example, this would be super helpful to kind of get uh, a mid-journey subscription and just take advantage of their latest features, including the ability to you know do text very uh, effectively. Uh, there was a time when uh, mid-journey didn't get text right. They still don't get like fingers <laughs> right, uh, you know fingers and body parts. Sometimes there's like editing that's required after the fact, but at least it gets you to a, a very close point where you can just tweak a few things just with Photoshop or just, you know, outsource that to uh, someone on Upwork and just get that cleaned up. So it's not uh, that big of a deal. Anybody yeah. who isn't aware of what those are, ChatGPT is kind of your text AI where you can have a conversation. Dolly and Midjourney create graphics from text for you. And I've found, and I think most agree that Midjourney is much better at creating like photorealistic images than Dolly is, but Dolly is much easier to work with. I totally agree. Yeah. And especially because ChatGPT is now uh, seamlessly integrated with Dolly, you can write your prompt right into ChatGPT and it gives you an image. So it's uh, really sh shortcutted the kind of lengthy process of 
picking up a prompt from ChatGPT and then entering it into another uh, image generation platform. It's all kind of combined now. So it's, it's really easy. I guess there's no excuse for not using it or at least playing with it. I know a lot of people are playing with the wonderful images that get returned. And we'll see some examples uh, as well. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. And then the third repetitive advertising task that we want to mention is image enhancements. So with image enhancement, you know, you might have an image that's in a square format, for example, or let's say it's in a vertical format, but Amazon wants it in the landscape uh, horizontal format. So how do you convert from square to landscape? Well, there's a bunch of um, white space on, on both sides of the image that can be filled up with generative AI. And it's gotten so good that it kind of senses all the elements of the you know the objects in your main image and it kind of goes and blends that out uh, seamlessly and kind of fills up that entire space that you define for it so that's kind of really cool because then you can repurpose your images let's say you have images that you're using in uh, on instagram for example or uh, any other platform uh, that might be square or vertical, you can now convert it very easily into horizontal and use it for your headline ads. Nice. That, that I haven't seen in action yet, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, with image enhancements, there's also other things like improving the resolution, uh, the image resolution, because sometimes you have like low res images that Amazon just won't accept, right? So you could use some of the AI tools that I'm going to mention today to kind of convert that same image and make it like richer. And the thing is that it's not simply increasing the resolution. It's actually filling in the gaps with very photorealistic pixels and that kind of makes it look better and it uh, also kind of meets the the specifications of images required for some of the ads very nice yeah that'll be cool yeah and then of course we have keyword research right that's such an important task uh, and i know there's so many tools out there that help with keyword research but the thing is that with chat gpt you can make it even better like there's ways to enhance the whole keyword uh, research uh, sequence just by doing things a certain way, making the starting point a little bit richer. Because, I mean, let's say you use a, a tool like Data Dive or Helium 10 or something like that. You could start with like a keyword that you think is the right keyword for your product, but your product might be useful to more than one audience. You might have like five different audiences for your product. So you want to tap into what these five different audiences, you know, say when they're referring to your type of product. You want to use their language as the starting point, as the seed, and then you can expand on that. So ChatGPT actually helps you to get to that point. And I have some examples of how that, that expansion can happen. Then there's more stuff that gets more into like the data realm. So doing things like gap analysis or comparing to two different lists and seeing what's missing. Or let's say you want to enrich your, let's say your backend keywords with new keywords and you want to make it so that it's um, exactly within 249 bytes. And, you know, it, you know, it also includes, let's say, Spanish words and so on. So there's, you know, stuff that you can do uh, by creating micro tools. That's what we call them internally. We have a bunch of micro tools that we created with the help of ChatGPT, by the way, uh, where all these formulas, etc., are embedded into these tools. And anyone on your team can simply upload some basic information and then uh, be able to leverage these tools to uh, to kind of come up with the final product, which is maybe in this case, it could be like a list of keywords that should be added to the back end. You know, so there's a bunch of those sorts of things that can can be done. You can also do things like trend analysis, month over month trends. I generally like trends over snapshots because uh, they tell you whether your product is trending up or down or remaining flat. Whereas if you just look at snapshots of data, those tend to be kind of incomplete in a sense because you really don't know what action to take if you just look at a search term report, for example. But when you see data across months, let's say you do a campaign month over month analysis, sometimes campaigns that were performing really well in the past somehow stop performing because somehow impressions uh, disappeared. Like, uh, why did that happen? So, you know, creating tools like that, uh, that you can kind of plug into your overall kind of PPC toolbox can be super helpful in detecting anomalies, finding out things that 
you know, you can't really see very easily if you just look at snapshot data. And then the, the last thing I've mentioned in my list is keyword negation. And again, keyword negation is a pretty big task and you can't do it in a hurry. <laughs> like you really have to think about keyword negation because, you know, if you negate keywords that actually might be beneficial for visibility, uh, then you know you, you could end up blocking the wrong keywords, uh, especially if you use negative phrase match. It it could go and kind of block a lot of stuff. Awesome. So you gotta be careful in the way you do keyword negation. So we actually came up with uh, a system for keyword negation, and I'm gonna show you the simple version of that. But then there's a more complicated version uh, which we call the n-gram analysis. It's not something that we invented. It was always out there. A lot of Google folks uh, use n-gram analysis for determining root words that can be used to determine like patterns across a multitude of search terms that collectively are, you know bleeding money so you can identify those patterns and then kind of block them off you know so so we we developed some tools around that as well so just to summarize i'm talking about a range of activities and you can add more this is just like what three four five seven repetitive tasks that i've mentioned on the screen but there's so many more that that you could come up with my general rule of thumb is if i find uh, myself doing something more than three times then it's better to get some sort of automation in place uh, mm -hmm. so that i don't have to do it again right so that's just my general <laughs> rule of thumb to uh, look for ideas for automation absolutely yeah if you can automate it that's a very good way to save time Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, cool. So then let's uh, dive into it. So I'm going to go over these seven points and uh, just show you some examples. Okay, so the first one is generating compelling SP headline ad copy. So I'm going to just take some examples. What I have on the screen is a palm leaf uh, compostable plate. Uh, so I have a headline ad here that looks uh, pretty standard, but it's kind of missing a few elements. So it's got your logo, it's got a headline, and it's got three products, but it doesn't have uh, an image. It doesn't have the custom image. Uh, so, I mean, I know Amazon is uh, already sending us like warnings that, you know, if you have any ads in this format, they're, they're going to stop delivering. So now is the time to kind of go back and look if you're in that situation, you, you probably do need to add fairly quickly, add a headline uh, image, a lifestyle photo there so that it can be, you know, in compliance with the, the standard uh, anatomy of the sponsored brand ad. Uh, but then there's also other elements that seem to be a little bit off. So for example, in this case, uh, the headline itself, it says uh, made from plants, made for all, right? Seems like a pretty broad sweeping statement about the whole brand right uh -huh. it, it talks about okay so i have products that are made from plants and products that are made for all right now that's not a very compelling headline uh, honestly uh, the reason is that i might have typed uh, a bamboo plate for example uh, what i have here is a palm leaf plate which is yep. kind of different but I mean, it fall, falls in the same um, category of like biodegradable and uh, eco-friendly type of uh, products, but it's not the same thing, right? So you want to actually be as granular as possible when it comes to, you know, your keywords and then make sure that those, uh, you know, those keywords are actually present in the headline itself. So here's uh, the, the workflow that I created for generating a bunch of sponsored brand headline ad copy that includes one of the keywords in, uh, in a group. So let me just back up a little bit. You start with a tool like Helium 10 or uh, Datadive and you come up with, uh, let's say, a bunch of keywords that you would like to advertise, right? So you want, let's say you have 100 keywords, right? And you want to create sponsored brand uh, headline ads. So what we're going to do is we will use ChatGPT to take that list as input and spit out uh, 10 different groupings that are very, very closely related to, to the other semantically. So semantic groupings that, that are small. So like 100, you just basically say analyze a list of keywords. Uh, and group them into very closely related topics, right? So uh, ChatGPT will do that very easily. It takes one minute for this prompt to be executed. But then what you want to do next is that you want to say, 
for each of these groupings give me a headline ad copy uh, which is no lo no more than 50 characters right and that that headline must include one of the keywords in that grouping so you've already uh, combined them or clubbed them together uh, thematically and then you're going to pick one of those very compelling words and then add that to the copy uh, and chat gpt can do this very easily you're creating the groupings because obviously if you have you know a hundred keywords you don't necessarily want a hundred different headlines so you're grouping the keywords that are similar to each other and then creating headlines based on those groupings exactly yeah okay. yeah and that's that's the best way to kind of improve the conversion rate of your sponsored brand headline ads so. interesting so the the prompt for that is just something like take this list of keywords well we've got it this is it right on the screen here it's this one yeah mm -hmm. okay so analyze this list of keywords and group them into very closely related topic clusters limiting each group size to no more than eight keywords discard duplicates Next, for each of these groups, generate one compelling sponsored brand's headline ad copy within within 30 to 50 characters that must include one of the keywords in that group or a close variant of it. Make sure no exclamation marks or special characters are used. Keep in mind this is suitable, sustainable, eco-friendly palm leaf products brand. Okay, so... That makes perfect sense. You're not giving it any other details about the brand or anything like that before this, like, you know, description of their products and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you could. Uh, you could actually now upload, you know, a, a product uh, description as context and then upload the uh, list of keywords as additional context. And you can, you can modify this, you know, uh, any way you want. Uh, this has worked fine for us, but if you want to be even more fancy, uh, definitely go ahead and, and do that as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I guess the example that I'm showing on the screen is uh, one of the clusters that uh, ChatGPT created, which includes words. Actually, the, the cluster is disposable plates for parties and weddings. So it came up with that heading, you know, I mean, it's just a cluster heading, but it came up with those that, that heading and then it kind of uh, put together words like party plates, disposable plates for party, disposable plates, wedding plates, dinner plates, disposable, appetizer plates, disposable, Amazon plates, disposable, and place for party so it just picked up those words and then it came up with the the headline which was echo chic party plates and more so that was one headline that includes the main word which is party plates and so you've kind of got a flavor of like echo and chic because it's for a wedding and then it's got the word party and plates and it's got more right it's not this this brand has more than just party plates so you can get plates and other cutlery and so on uh, so it kind of is uh, picking up the keyword and also giving people an idea of like this is a good brand that that has you know an eco-friendly component and it has a lot of products yep Yep. So very good. that's that's yeah. So that's how you kind of go about making your headline copy very kind of on point, and you don't need uh, any copywriter to to do this. Just ChatGPT as your assistant. Now, um, if you want to, a lot easier to come up with the creative that you need to for your ads instead of sitting there just trying to guess what people might like. And, and you yeah. found that for the most part, the headlines that ChatGPT comes up with are pretty good or do you got to do a lot of testing and then kind of going back to the drawing board and getting new ones yeah no they don't always get it right so uh you need human oversight of course but you can always say hey that wasn't very good create another one with this angle you know so you can ask it to create as many you know versions of it and you pick the best one right yeah, human oversight is definitely important. I don't know if you've seen the the news articles recently about the flood of products that are showing up on Amazon where the title is something like, uh, I'm sorry, ChatGPT cannot fulfill this request or something like that. <laughs> bulk creating these products and uploading that into Amazon. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yes, definitely need human oversight. 
So that brings me to the second point here, which is creating headline ads in bulk. Now, uh, what I already showed you was the the one-off version of doing this, but we've actually embedded uh, ChatGPT right into Sheets so that we can do this exercise fairly fast. So that's just an extra point for someone who's more advanced. Uh, there's many um, plugins available out there for a small fee, I think 10 or 15 bucks a month that can allow you to do the same exercise for like hundreds of keywords, uh, thousands of keywords even, and then you just basically drag and drop the formula, the prompt, and then it just gets uh, created in bulk. So many, so many options. Do you like a Google sheet for you instead of just outputting it in the chat? Exactly. And then you have it, uh, you know, saved in a, in a location. You can always go back to it. If you're doing A-B testing, you can always go back to it and then revise it, review it, things like that. It's not lost in chat, basically. Okay. Do you guys have any pref preferred plugin for syncing with uh, like Google Sheets or? Yeah, actually we created our own. So, but I know that there's a bunch of them. If you go to the Chrome store, you'll find a bunch of, just type Google Sheets, ChatGPT plugin. That's it. And you'll find a bunch of them. Okay. Yeah. You created your yeah. own. Did you use ChatGPT to write the plugin for you? <laughs> Partially, yes. <laughs> yeah. I've done yes. that actually uh, with a couple different things for some software that I created that I wanted to do some basic things. And I've had ChatGPT write the plugin and, you know, allow me to create a link where there wasn't actually a link before. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, sky's the limit with uh, all this wonderful help we're getting from ChatGPT. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me just give you some more examples and I might breeze through these because there's so many and we've got limited time, but you could create like, you know, an ASIN sorting hat uh, for product attribution targeting. This was one of the projects that we did where, you know, how you uh, discover a bunch of ASINs for product targeting. You want to make sure that these ASINs kind of are in a certain bucket. And then we define these buckets based on low risk, medium risk, and high risk. Low risk being you know, the ones that don't have a lot of reviews, don't have a great rating, and their price point is probably, let's say, higher than yours uh, versus, you know, a high risk target where, you know, the, the, the thing that you're targeting has a stellar rating and they have tons and tons of reviews and the price point is better than yours. So of these two choices, you know, obviously you, you should be bidding on both, but you probably want to control them differently. So you want to separate that, them out into different campaigns so that you can have a different target ACoS for each of them. If you use a software that helps you set target ACoS at the campaign level, just saying that PPC Ninja allows you to do that. So with that sort of granular targeting, this sort of grouping actually makes sense because then the low risk ones, you can be a little bit more kind of aggressive with your bidding, whereas the high risk targets, uh, you can kind of keep your bids low. So. I'll just show you the workflow for this sort of thing. Uh, we use Helium 10 to grab a bunch of ASINs that are related to our product. You could also use any other tools or you could use the Product Opportunity Explorer that also gives you kind of similarities uh, between your product and other products. You download that list and then you basically ask ChatGPT to split that list up into these three buckets. Uh, now I've created a few different iterations of this tool and I found that when I let ChatGPT figure out how to separate them out. It actually came up with a pretty good way of, of splitting these um, up. I, I didn't have to give them, uh, give it thresholds like less than X or greater than X. I just said, here is my review count and here is my price point and here is my number of uh, review, oh, sorry, rating, yeah. So I just gave it those three and then it analyzed the whole list and uh, divided the, the whole list up into three buckets, which kind of makes it really cool and I can create three different uh, ads or ad groups from it. Just to uh, clarify on that, so for this, you're looking at your top competitors and uh, what does low risk, medium and high risk targets mean? How do you specify that? Yeah, so the, the, the prompt that I have here basically explains that. So I've told ChatGPT to split this list out into three buckets, low risk, medium risk and high risk. My goal is to place my ads on these pages. I only want to do this if my price point is better or my review count is better and my ratings are better. So okay. that's all I say to it. And then it figures out 
how to logically separate it out. You know, it figures out the thresholds and it does a pretty good job of it. And, and even if it's off by a little bit, it's okay because it's, it gets most of it right in this particular example. And then I can just create three separate campaigns. Okay. And so, so it's looking at their price point compared to yours, their reviews compared to yours, and their rating compared to yours. So anything that is your product is not better in those categories is just going to get rid of or it's going to put those in the high risk? It'll put them in the high risk. Okay. And then in, yeah. anything that maybe you're very similar to is going to go into medium. And then if, anything that you're a lot better than would go into low risk, perhaps. Is that how it's typically breaking it down? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. that's very easy way to quickly look at all your competitors then and split them into how competitive they might be against you. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Just for anybody that's listening and not watching, we're going to have these slides available in the show notes uh, so that people can pull those up and look at these prompts and stuff and you know copy and paste them and use them as their own. Okay, cool. So now let's get into some of the um, keyword research uh, type of uh, tasks, right, with advertising. So I'm going to use this next uh, section to figure out what my best or highly relevant keywords are from Cerebro, right? So what I've done here is I've used Cerebro to uh, basically do a reverse ASIN lookup with 10 up to 10 products. And I get a, a pretty extensive list of keywords, right? So everybody knows that Cerebro can give you a list of keywords. Now, yep. the thing is, problem with that output is that you can't just use it as is, right? You, you have to kind of go kind of do a second pass on it to figure out if those keywords are relevant or not just because they are ranked or visible for uh, for those products doesn't mean that they are the right keywords for you right so what you want to do is you want to clean up that uh, cerebro output by asking chat gpt to do a quality check of that list of keywords and the thing that you provide uh, chat gpt with is a description of your product right and so then it knows that you know this keyword is actually related to your product and this keyword is not right so that immensely improves the quality of your keyword research because you don't have to spend that time kind of going over every single keyword and saying oh my god what's this <laughs> you know there's a lot of like garbage words that yeah that get shown out so you're just basically separating that list out uh based on shopping intent and relevancy of the competitor that, that that's basically how you would evaluate the list of, of keywords and then ask ChatGPT to download uh, give you a download downloadable file which you can then uh, use for your keywords okay very good and now are you doing all of these steps in the same chat gpt re uh prompt so that it's remembering what you've done previously or are you creating new chats for each step yeah so uh you know, in that stage when we're trying to uh, perfect the prompt, because you want to do a few iterations before you get it right, we just use the chat GPT interface. But then once we've got it, then we actually move over to Google Sheets with the embedded chat GPT plugin mm -hmm. uh, so that we can do it at scale. Got it. Yeah. And so through the API, it's probably creating separate chats for each call then, I would imagine. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah, cool. So I guess I have a few more that are keyword related. So there's the next one, which is creating highly relevant uh, keywords and turning them into broad match modifiers. Now, broad match modifiers are my kind of preferred way of using broad match um, because broad match is you know, it can get a little bit too broad <laughs> uh, because uh, Amazon might match it to uh, synonyms and stuff like that. So, I mean, we do so much keyword research to find the right words. And then if Amazon goes and matches it with what it thinks is the, the keyword, uh, then that's no fun. So, so we try to use broad match modifiers. And just for people who don't know what those are, uh, you have to add a plus sign in front of each of the, the words in that keyword. So let's say it's a three-part word, something like Nike running shoes, then you would basically create that word as plus Nike space plus uh, running space plus shoes. And what it does is that it, uh, you know, with this uh, keyword, uh, Amazon makes sure that the search term has to include those three words that you added a plus with. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's kind of ensuring that the the match is accurate and, and you're not getting synonyms and other types of like 
broad words. This is especially important with sponsored brand ads, but even with sponsored products, we're seeing that broad match modifiers by themselves can often bring in like kind of garbage results uh, or garbage matches, whereas the broad match modifier tends to be very, very clean. So uh, again, this is something that ChatGPT can do easily. I mean, what I have on the screen is just uh, a list of keywords that I'm floating to ChatGPT and saying, convert this into broad match modifiers. And I've given it the definition of broad match modifier, which is a plus in front of each word. So it's kind of done that for me. It's a simple task that can save me a little bit of time. Okay, so you're putting these in as broad match keywords, but with the pluses in front, and then it ensures that whatever broad match it matches with at least contains those words in it. Exactly, yeah. The the vehicle will still be broad match, but mm -hmm. the flavor that you're using is the broad match modifier with the plus signs. Okay, and you guys yeah. uh, use a lot of broad match. Do you use those kind of as your like keyword generating campaigns and then moving them into phrase and exact match? Yeah, so when we launch campaigns, we actually launch them with a bunch of broad match modifiers and also some exact match. But as we all know, Amazon is no longer treating exact as exact because even exact is matching to some other words. So we've seen that broad match modifiers actually do basically they do the job of exact match, especially with long tails, right? It kind of does the same thing by making sure that those words are actually present, uh, yeah. but it can be present in any order. That's the advantage of the broad match modifier. So I'm finding myself doing more or BMMs. And of course, we have exact match. I don't use phrase match a whole lot, but in some cases I do. In some cases where I know that the sequence matters, like running shoes, I, I prob I'm not going to type shoes running. <laughs> so running shoes will probably stick together. So in those cases, it makes sense to use them as phrase matches, but I don't use phrase, phrase match a whole lot, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Most PPC experts uh, say the same, that they don't use the phrase match much. It's usually broad or exact. So, But I, I like this the broad match modifier. I still use a lot of exact matches. I can't say I've played a lot with the broad match modifiers, but it's definitely something I'm going to dive into after we get done here. Yeah, actually, we've been using broad match modifiers for almost two years. Believe it or not, we've we kind of figured that if this is the way Amazon is uh, behaving on the sponsored brand side of things, there will come a time when they do the same thing on the sponsored product side of things. So we kind of future-proofed ourselves and we just, since like 2021, yeah, that was 2021, so almost two and a half years, we've just been using broad match modifiers, no broad matches. Okay, very good. So do you guys still do, I'm just curious, do you guys still just set an auto campaign kind of as like a finder campaign or you just go more right to these broad match modifiers and use that to find your keywords and such? Yeah, we always use auto campaigns, but the way we use them is a little bit different from other, other people. So we actually like to split them up and do four different campaigns so that they can they can have their own target ACoS, right? Otherwise, if you're combining close match and loose match in the same, uh, they're mm -hmm. obviously not gonna perform at the same level, plus the negative keywords will be different for those two. So you don't wanna combine them, so we split them up. But recently we've started doing another kind of additional set of four auto campaigns that also negate the branded terms from it. So branded keywords and branded ASINs uh, and then that becomes the pure kind of non-branded auto campaign for us. And that's kind of, kind of helps us with good keyword discovery because there's a, there's a chance that an auto campaign can prioritize branded words and mm -hmm. not give a chance to other words to come through. So we set like two, two different sets of auto campaigns to kind of address that problem. Okay, excellent. Yep. Okay, so then the next one is generating keywords with ChatGPT, and it's kind of interesting where you can actually generate your own keywords where there's like a kind of mixed, you know, understanding of like what the product does, especially when compatibility is super important. You want to be able to get the right components of compatibility right and so this is generally really good for broad match modifiers as well so for example we have connect words and we have compatible words and then we have differentiator words so let's say connect this with that right and then we have 
it's compatible for something. So you can ask ChatGPT to generate words by combining these groups, group A, B, and C, uh, for some connect words, some compatible with words, and some differentiator words, and ask it to generate a whole bunch of broad match modifiers. So I'm, I'm giving you an example here. Let's say I have three groups of keywords that I would like to combine to generate keywords. So group A contains iPhone, iPhone Pro, and group B contains uh, 14 and 15, because it's for iPhone 14 and 15. And uh -huh. group uh, C is uh, case, cover, wallet, and MagSafe. Those are kind of differentiator words that uh, my product addresses, right? My product is an iPhone case uh, that is, you know, also serving as a wallet or a cover, etc. So it can actually generate these words very easily. So there's 16 keywords that were generated with these combinations. And so through this, we've generated like all the words that I need to cover all the cases, right? Because I support my iPhone uh, 14, I support iPhone 15, and my product can either be treated as a case or a cover or a wallet or a MagSafe kind of case. So these combinations are like my funnels and I can use broad match modifier to do this. Now, if you try to do this through a keyword research tool, you're probably not, not going to get this exhaustive list. You might get only the one or two that have a higher search volume or something and you're going to miss all the others, right? So oftentimes we, uh, we do manufacture these keywords because we know that this is what our product is. So why not, right? So we, we create these keywords using ChatGPT's help. Okay. And um, I'm assuming, how are you coming up with the the words that you're putting in each group? Is, is ChatGPT yeah. coming up with those as well? Uh, no. So this is basically anyone who knows their product really, really well, they will mm -hmm. know this information through just the seeds, right? They can describe their products in just a few words, right? I don't know. So I, I talked about the iPhone case, right? And it, it, it has a differentiator, which is like the 14, 15. It only works with 14 or 15. I don't want a general word that keyword that says iPhone cases. That's too broad. It, it might bring me some iPhone 10 users as well. I don't want them. I only want my 14 and 15. So this method is really good when you have kind of a highly differentiated product that is that has compatibility as one of the, the important components of that description. Uh, if compatibility doesn't matter, then you don't need to worry about this method. This is really good for when compatibility is important for finding your products. Got it. Okay. Very good. Okay. So I think I'm going to go over the next one real quick because I want to show you some of the image based uh, ones. So I can generate seed keywords using magnet using a target audience. So earlier I was telling you that uh, you could ask a bunch of people how they describe a garlic press and each person might describe it a different way. So you could kind of uh, ask chat GPT to figure out who these audiences are and then say, what is this audience likely to, to use as a keyword to describe my product? So for the palm leaf based products that I talked about earlier, uh, it came up with um, things like environmentally conscious consumers or event planners or restaurant and food trucks or outdoor enthusiasts. Now, these four people are totally different. They're different audiences and they might seek out a certain characteristic of your palm leaf based product that is different from the others, right? So what could these words be. For example, event planners might be looking for event plates. Restaurants and food trucks might be looking for disposable plates. Outdoor enthusiastic enthusiasts might be looking for camping plates. And health conscious consumers by, might be looking for chemical free plates. So it's the same plate, but it, it's described differently by different people. And yeah. each of these can be used to set you on a different journey of keyword discovery. And uh, you can use these as seed keywords, then plug them into a tool like Magnet, and then ask that to generate a bunch of more keywords. And you also get the search volume with Magnet. So that's basically how this generation process works. Okay, very good. Yeah, that all makes sense. Take yep. advantage of all the data that ChatGPT has access mm -hmm. to, to get what it yeah. thinks people are gonna be looking for. Yeah, exactly. So now I'm going to go to the next section, which is about image processing, generation, and editing. And this is kind of fun. What I did was uh, I created a prompt with Midjourney that basically imagines a daytime long table with square-shaped and square-shaped thick palm leaves, uh, leaf plates, bamboo cutlery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I also gave it a aspect ratio, which is the prompt at the very end. It says dash dash AR two is to one. Uh, if you don't do this, then Midjourney will give you square images. So just something to 
uh, make a note of. And then Mid Journey generates a bunch of beautiful kind of landscape uh, lifestyle photos that you can then integrate into your headline ads. So what you see on the screen is one of the photos that was generated by Mid Journey. It looks beautiful and it matches really well. Now this ad is beginning to make sense, right? Uh, even the headline was picked by ChatGPT, disposable and sustainable party plates. Yeah, that looks yep. much better. And you don't have any issue with the fact that those plates in that image aren't the actual plates we're selling? Yeah, it, it just turned out to be pretty close to what I have. And uh, there's no there's no reason why you can't edit this. You can always have someone from Upwork do the final editing and place your product in on that plate. Now, I know that the new versions of Midjourney also allow you to upload your product. So there's more advanced stuff that you can do if you want to you know, experiment with this. There's so many options there now. Okay, very good. Just uh, for the people who are going to get the slides, there's also some aspect ratios uh, that you can use to generate different types, uh, like AR one is to one means it's a square image and so on. So there's a few different ones that you can download here from my slides. And then I've also given you some details on how to get started with Midjourney. There's a few resources here that you can use to get started with Midjourney. You can also use Canva, which is kind of cool because Canva also has an AI tool inside it uh, where you can describe the prompt and then create like these beautiful background images that I use for posts. You know, posts have, um, they are basically like free advertising, right? You can create Amazon posts as frequently as you like, and they need to be different from anything previously that, that you've uploaded previously. So what you can do is simply ask ChatGPT or simply ask Canva in this case to generate a bunch of vibrant backgrounds and then just throw, you know, your product right in the middle and that's it. That's your post. It's so easy to Anybody can do this fairly quickly. You can generate 100 of these and every day just, you know, your VA could go in and just upload one and uh, that's it. You get a bunch of free uh, advertising with posts. Here's another one that I did for, yeah, with Mr. Beast. I just kind of used the colors of their packaging and just kind of did some cool, uh, vibrant background colors that make it look beautiful, easy to do. Yeah, I didn't know that Canva had AI built into it now so i'll have to play with that it just yeah. generates the background and then you're uploading your uh you know transparent background image right and putting it over the top of whatever it creates exactly yeah so you can it's basically uh, under uh app i think there's an app market or an apps button when you click on that you have to say image to text sorry text to image the other way around so you have to say text to image and then it gives you the ai image generator yeah okay very nice. Oh. Definitely play yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about image cleanup and regeneration. So here's one image that I have with a lot of text and I want to just remove all the text because text is not allowed on sponsored brand headline ads. So I use this eraser tool from Dolly and uh, then just give it a prompt to generate the missing parts, which is kind of cool. So it just does that and it cleans it up, like it removes everything easily. And then the problem with this image was that, you know, it was not meeting the bar for 1280 by 720 pixels mm -hmm. that Amazon needs for sponsored headline ads. So you use this tool, it's called replicate.ai and replicate.ai will take an input and you can say, I want 2X quality, 3X quality, 4X quality. It, you you can say whatever you like and then it kind of enhances the image now for those who are watching this if you compare the left and the right if you look really closely you'll, you'll be able to tell that the right side is way sharper than the left and you can tell right so the quality is so much better and it meets the the criteria for uh, a sponsored brand a headline ad and um, so this is the way to kind of um, uh, upscale your uh, low quality low res photos and make them usable now the the dolly that you're using there to fill in the gaps of an image after you kind of just wiped out what you didn't want with an eraser is that you have to do that directly on dolly or is that possible to do through chat gpt yeah i definitely need to do it through dolly because you know you need that uh, eraser tool that's only available in the dolly interface and then the prompt is just in dolly gotcha i thought maybe you opened it and you know like paint it mm -hmm wiped it out but you did that directly in dolly yes i did it in dolly yeah mm -hmm. okay very good yeah 
cool. So here's another example of how I converted a square image to a landscape with uh, AI fillers. Again, I uploaded a square photo to Dolly and then I asked it to widen and generate the missing parts. So for anyone who's uh, watching this, you can see that this woman's face was actually cut off in half and this um, <laughs> completed the image. It, uh, it figured out what was missing and it uh, figured out the ambience of the background and it kind of expanded it out very beautifully done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not bad. It <laughs> looks maybe a little bit funky-ish. If you look, uh, it, just because I know that it was generated maybe, but just looking at that quickly, it looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, yeah, so this is the final image after it generated the missing parts. Yeah. Yeah, and the background is really cool. I, you know, the side yeah. of her face, I think, is dented in a little bit more than it probably should be. But aside yeah. from that, like it filled in the trees in the background and the sky and everything, and that all looks really nice. Right, right, yeah. Cool. So now I'm going to show you another trick with uh, images uh, because now you can simply upload images directly to ChatGPT and can, you know, generate uh, kind of uh, lookalikes. So I'm going to show you an example. So here is I went on to this beauty brand and I picked up one of the visuals that I really like. Uh, so this is a lipstick, a lip balm by Bliss Blissberry or you berry Bliss you berry and it has like a grid with nine faces and nine different basically different shapes of lips and it's just a lip gloss basically so what I did was I I don't even need to download this image I can simply right click and uh, copy image and then I, I paste that into ChatGPT. I don't even need to upload it I just simply paste it and I say create an image like this one that's it and so what it generated just blew my mind like I couldn't believe how amazing this new mm -hmm. uh, look is it it just got it figured out exactly what i needed and it's kind of just replicated the whole thing and there's two versions of it one matte one glossy but the idea being that this is a lip balm it's something that goes over your lipstick uh, it doesn't matter what your lip base lipstick shade is it's just a, a gloss on top of it so i could have given another prompt saying make it glossy or whatever but I, I was just testing it out to see how it understands an image kind of deconstructs it and then reconstructs it in totally different you know using completely different looking people yeah yeah it does it surprisingly well it can actually surprisingly well see. yeah well, let's see the image and figure mm -hmm. out what it is. Right, yeah. Here's another one with uh, from CoverGirl. It, this was actually part of their A-plus content, so I just wanted to see if it would, you know, copy this and create something for a different brand. So I just uh, did that and said, make one just like this. So ChatGPT generated this image. Now I'm just going to slap on my lip gloss right on the left, and that's it. I mean, I, I don't really need much. It can be used as is on the uh, A-plus, and it's got a vibe, you know. It's kind of cool, and I, I could edit parts of it out just so that the lips show but overall it's done a pretty decent job of you know making the point that i just want to make it similar to my source image and it makes it very very similar to that here yep. are some more examples yeah so in the left uh, image there's like this manuka honey it's actually basically a honey thing and it's just showing how honey is kind of dripping over this amazing gosh that makes me hungry <laughs> um, yeah, <I> <laughs> But then look at the right side. This is the ChatGPT version of it. That looks so delicious. Like, how? Like, it's just mind-blowing how it uh, yes. completely... It's interesting that it it took the image that has a, an, an actual branded product in it. It decided to remove the branded product, but actually made the honey look more realistic and right. put it on bread with some cheese and pistachios so yeah it definitely looks very nice right yeah here's another example so this one was something uh, i think from a supplement brand it said this was one of their images i think number four or five it says take daily with food so i mean the lookalike is again very similar it's a man mixing uh, salad in a bowl different angle you know similar pin stripes and kitchen setting so cool i mean really yeah. uh, you can you can make a lot uh, by just looking at your competitors listing and just taking those ideas and feeding it to chat, chat gpt and saying make one just like this so, now, kind of, now that one interestingly the one chat gpt made looks better than the original it looks more realistic to me 
Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And then, you know, nowadays people are getting used to uh, AI images. And so, I mean, as long as the point gets across, I'm actually okay with it. <laughs> I don't yeah. mind the AI image. And you have the graphic designer put your product in there on the table and that'd be perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I guess the magic prompt here is just to copy and paste into ChatGPT and then say create an image just like this one. That's the magic prompt. Now you can add a, a few more instructions if you want to, but let ChatGPT do the first version and see uh, how that looks. Cool. So now I'm coming to the uh, the last section, which is building micro tools for increasing productivity. And this is the section where you, Todd, have been, uh, you know, nerding out with like app script and things like that, right? So yeah, ChatGPT is surprisingly good at generating code. It's surprisingly good. It can understand language and translate that into, you know, expressions and formulas and, and actual code. This does require some advanced skills. Like you, you do need to understand what ch app script is or you basically need to be a user of google sheets so that you can use uh, those formulas that it generates and if you know things like a python or sql then you can also use this to help you generate those basically those programs as well so just some examples again i'm going to breeze through this section but some examples uh, of uh, one of the um exercise I did with ChatGPT. So I have this long list of keywords and I say, hey, split this up into long tail and short tail, right? And it generates this formula. I wouldn't be able to generate this Google Sheets formula myself. I'm pretty sure. It's a pretty complicated formula for sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's very cool that it even tells me where to place this, where to place my original list, where to place my formula, and then it does it. Pretty cool. Here's another example of a backend keyword generation tool that I created where I am basically uh, doing a dual thing. I'm asking it to convert the words into Spanish. And then I'm asking, I'm actually going to show it to you here. It's this, this is the tool. So the tool, basically, I just have to dump my uh, words and word frequency, which I can get from Helium 10. In Cerebro, there is a place where you see word frequency cloud, I think that's what it's called. But you basically copy that entire list and just dump it here. And then in Google Sheets, you have the ability to kind of uh, select. You see this? As soon as I select with a checkbox, it gets added or removed from my final list of backend keywords. Now it's also doing an additional thing of counting the formula, like counting how many words there are. So if the, sorry, not words, bytes. So we have a upper limit of 249 bytes, right? So currently it's showing red. If I remove one or two, yeah, there we go. So it's come down, the byte counter comes down to 246. So now it's fine. Now I can pick this up and, and drop it into my backend keyword. Now I also have the Spanish translation, which, you know, you can use Google Translate or you can do uh, ChatGPT Translate. And this is again a formula that you don't need to do anything about. You can just let it be here and then you can choose which keywords you want to add. And those keywords get added to your backend right here. You see, so I have both, it's a combined list of target, English, English targets and Spanish targets and a final kind of list that uh, can be used in your backend keywords and the counters there. I use ChatGPT to create this tool basically. Yeah, I was just gonna ask, so ChatGPT created this spreadsheet for you. You downloaded it and then uploaded it into, uh, uh, well, this looks like Excel online, or no, this is Google Docs. This is Google Sheets, yeah. So Sheets, no, ChatGPT, yeah, ChatGPT yeah, did not give me anything to download. I basically described my problem to it in great detail. I said I have a list of words with their frequency, and I want to be able to not only convert those into Spanish, but I also want to be able to target selectively, and then I want unique words kind of added to the backend field. And so this is the formula it generated. This join, unique, flatten, split, join, it's pretty complicated, but it does this dynamically. Mm -hmm. So uh, not necessarily on topic with AI, but I'm curious with your guys' backend keywords. Uh, do you guys primarily put in the backend keywords words that you don't want to put in the front end or are you duplicating some of your top keywords in the back end keywords as well? Yeah, so yeah, there's, there's this whole incremental indexing things that um, uh, Stephen Pope had talked about in conversation with Ad Badger a while ago. Uh, mm -hmm. The incremental indexing strategy actually calls for repeating the main keyword in the back end as well so that it could kind of 
bring, build these longer chains of words uh, initially till you get indexed for the longer tails and then you rotate your backend keyword. So backend keyword rotation is important. But uh, even though duplication is uh, not required and also uh, Amazon doesn't want you to dupli duplicate, uh, there's no harm in kind of repeating the main words. Like in this case, uh, palm leaf compostable plate, it's actually figuring in the back end as well. Uh, because this can go and uh, combine with other words here, you know, that, uh, of course, this is a dummy list uh, just for demonstration purposes, but it can go and combine with longer tail words and create longer indexes, which uh, would be missed out if I didn't include the main words in the back end. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So let me just go to the negative keyword tool, which is this ability to find patterns in you know, a bunch of long tail words. So let's say I have a product for kind of uh, early tweens, um, girls between ages, maybe 10 or something, uh, eight or eight to 10. Now mm -hmm. this, as you can see, has a bunch of search terms, right? Uh, these were clicks, uh, two, three, one, these are the clicks, right? Now, individually, you can see toddler comforter for girls is showing up it consumed one click. Bed sets for toddlers consumed one click. Toddler boy bedding set, king size one. Now, by itself, this is not harmful because it's just one click, right? And it might fly under the radar uh, of like a click threshold. But collectively, if you look, this word toddler, toddler, toddler is appearing in multiple long tail keywords. And it's a pattern that I want to negate. Uh, but how do you discover that pattern without um actually doing some sort like some kind of analysis across multiple keywords so we built uh like this this tool again using ChatGPT's help where we split the entire list of long tail keywords into single words so for example in this case girls full size comforter sets all of these words become a long list and mm -hmm. there'll, there'll be a counter for how many times the word appears and there'll be a counter for these words you know you'll be able to see that the word daughter actually appears six times in your entire list so if you know this list you know you can sort this list descending by frequency how how many times a word is appearing and then you can visually spot the ones that are not good for you like you know clearly that toddlers is not a word or let's say neon if the word neon appears five times and you don't even sell a neon product you can just negate safely negate those words uh, at scale so we've actually since then we've replaced this simple method with the n-gram analysis which is more complicated and you can probably research a little bit more on n-gram analysis there's a few different people talking about it i won't get into that today but the point is that uh, ChatGPT actually helped us create this uh, this single keyword tool analysis tool because i can easily spot how many times a word appears in a list and then i can uh, negate it i can just say okay this is not good i'm going to negate it right so it's a counter basically very simple counter but it does okay. the job of finding something that is uh, kind of not necessary you're not necessary to to um, advertise in fact it's harmful to advertise now have you ever tried using chat gpt that you know, after it creates you those single word lists, then ask it, okay, which of these keywords are probably not relevant for my product? Yeah, you could do that. You can chain uh, chain up different prompts and do exactly what you said, Todd. That's a pretty good good idea. Yeah. Yeah, especially the limit. someone else's products and maybe you're not entirely familiar with, you know, the product yourself. You can take advantage of just copying in the title, bullets, description, and having yeah. ChatGPT at least uh, help you with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's so many different ways of doing it. So I guess I'm at the end. Uh, there's a bonus uh, step that I have here, uh, which I've called localization. And if you guys are into any kind of localization into other languages, I've noticed that uh, ChatGPT's translation abilities are way better than Google Translate. So yes. you know that Google Translate is a formula. Like I was showing you earlier, you can do words into Spanish. Uh, Google Translate is a formula that's built into Google Sheets, but we have seen that ChatGPT's quality is way better. Also, I you know help with Japanese localization. I used to live in Japan, so I understand the language. But uh, if you look here, there's English words, and ja ja Japan actually has 
four different scripts. Uh, so if you ask ChatGPT to translate into the four different scripts, the three different scripts, and the fourth one being English, then you can actually get a very clean list of hiragana, katakana, and kanji, which is which are the three scripts. Uh, and and then you can you know create uh, campaigns with those separately, which is right. not something that a lot of people know. Yeah, I've, I've found that it's much better be, it, as well. A lot of my family speaks Spanish, and I you know speak a little bit, but not a lot and if you use google translate it's just like a literal translation where if you ask chat gpt to translate it to say venezuelan spanish it will actually translate it to more of how a, an actual speaker would say that rather than a literal translation from english to spanish right yeah this is yeah it's so advanced it really does such a great job yeah, so that's all I had uh, today's uh, thought. So <laughs> let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, no, this was was fantastic. Really good information that uh, I've got a lot of stuff to play with. So I appreciate it, and I'm sure anyone who's you know interested in this kind of stuff is geeking out as well right about now. So uh, I did have actually a, a couple questions, uh, not directly related to uh, AI, but just a couple of PPC questions that a, a viewer had asked. Um, so get your your thoughts on it. The first one is, uh, what is the best KPI for PPC, ROAS, ACOS, or TACOS? That is such an interesting question. Well, I don't use ROAS. I prefer ACOS over ROAS any day. And the reason is that ROAS will hide the, the price of the product. And so that doesn't really give you a good understanding of like how efficient your PPC is. But then uh, I like to use both TACOS and ACOS tacos for the long term and ACOS for the short term because on the day to day you need to manage your PPC effectively and you definitely need to uh, to see what the trends are if your ACOS is going up or down or whatever and you can be a lot more intentional with ACOS if you're you know separating campaigns by goal so mm -hmm. for example if you have ranking campaigns that are specifically intended for ranking keywords uh, you can actually set a target ACoS that is a bit higher than let's say a more generic keyword that you probably don't want to push that hard uh, and then certainly your branded keywords don't need to be at a very high target ACoS your ACoS can be much lower so for, from that perspective you need to know your ACoS at the campaign type level also uh, video ads, uh, in my opinion, can be a little bit higher on the ACOS side because they take up four spots and are more valuable because they also knock out three competitors. Um, mm -hmm. Also, they have the education, uh, you know, uh, function and uh, invaluable, you know, uh, having a video ad that demonstrate what the, pro what the product is is invaluable so i generally like to keep my target ACO slightly higher but then for the long term and looking at things uh, in a little bit of a zoomed out way you have to look at tacos because eventually your ads should be helping your organic right so uh, keeping those two numbers and actually i would like to throw in uh, two more uh, very important kpis uh, that we look at which is uh, conversion rate very important uh, and then also PPC contribution meaning what percentage of your sales comes from PPC versus organic so I think if you use those four you'll have a pretty solid kind of understanding of where your uh, advertising is headed okay very good um, and then uh, next one here what is the best strategy for PPC for a reseller uh, rather than a private label seller. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think resellers, it's a little bit tricky uh, because you you don't have control over the store page. So you're not probably going to use sponsored brand ads or sponsored video to store ads. So, you know, your best bet is to use like the basic ads, like sponsored products, right? Now, if you are a reseller, you're obviously going to be sharing the buy box with other resellers. So you want to use an ad type that is buy box aware. And so sponsored product uh, is the one. In some cases, sponsored display might not be, especially if you're a vendor also, you might not be able to kind of control when your ad start, starts or stops. So you'll be basically confined to sponsored product ads. And then 
Yeah, I think uh, definitely try category targeting ads, auto campaigns, uh, the way I described earlier, and then also keyword targeting ads. Yeah, and keep a really strong eye on your, your A cost to make sure you're staying profitable with your ads. As a reseller, you can't necessarily afford to lose money on your ads to try to increase the organic sales and stuff. It can be helpful, but you don't have as much margin to play with. Right, yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, this has been fantastic, Ritu. I think uh, we're definitely going to have you on again. And next time we're going to dive into more of the data analytics side over the artificial intelligence. But this has been fantastic. Uh, A lot of great stuff that I've learned. I'm sure everybody listening has learned as well. So I really appreciate you coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Todd. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.